Nicholas Badminton, the chief futurist at futurist.com. Hello, Nicholas. So good to have you on board. So explain it's great the to aim be, yeah. of this. It's, it's almost to turn a human into a sort of adjunct to a computer, or is that not really it? Well, you know, some people think that we're careering towards a technological singularity where humans and machines come together, finally. But, like, we're kind of at a position where, you know, the FDA have approved uh, human trials in this, and it's for very specific cases, you know, people with Parkinson's, ALS and whatever, um, to be able to maybe find some really useful applications of this kind of technology. Brain-computer interfaces have been around for a long time. I mean, in the 1950s, someone used it to try and stop a bull. We've also seen deep brain stimulation um, happening uh, for Parkinson's. We've also seen wireless implants going into the spine to help people walking in. So this is kind of a useful thing to happen. Obviously, we've got this huge amount of hyperbole coming from Musk, and he's sort of saying, hey, we can have products where we can control our computers with our brains as well. And that's where it all gets a little bit funky. So, so, so let's imagine, let's hope anyway and imagine that this latest operation of implanting this chip yeah. in this bloke's brain is a roar away, soar away success. Everything that was right. intended happens and it does exactly what it's meant to do and it does it brilliantly well. What will it achieve? What will this implant make this person able to do that this person couldn't do before? Well, you know, in, in the case of, say, Parkinson's, being able to, to, to stop, you know, the, the, the involuntary, like, shaking and a number of those things in ALS, maybe being able to help, uh, like, keep some mobility and whatever. To be honest, the, these uh, experiments never, never, ever start with a raw way success. So it's very slowly sort of uh, making steps forward, you know, running clinical trials. I mean, we, we've got this company, Neuralink, under a lot of investigations and under the microscope of how it did testing on animals. So this is a really, this is a, this is a fine line that the, the, the team is walking but hopefully they, they're going to do this in a way that is ethical, that is going to find some improvements of, uh, and certainly be treatments for these kinds of conditions that could actually be very good for the human race as well. And then, you know, eventually 10 plus years ahead, maybe then there's the voluntary sort of operation to upgrade yourself from human 1.0 to human 2.0. And, and, and let me, before we get to that bit, is there a possibility yeah. that what this might be able to do, this kind of implant of a chip, is enable people who can't communicate because they've had whatever illnesses, for example, the same kind of illnesses as Professor Stephen Hawking or that kind of a thing, yeah. that it might be able to enable them to communicate just by thinking? They can think and the, in, the, the chip will somehow convey what they're thinking into a machine which will then talk for them or something of that kind is is is, is that what we're, we're thinking could happen yeah ab absolutely those sorts of applications those use cases are a very high value especially for people that want to communicate and they're, they're unable to do so today so i mean elon musk sort of uh, wheels out stephen hawking's name um, unfortunately he's not with us anymore yeah. but imagine if you could sort of uh, supercharge that capability of being able to to, to write and speak uh, in real time a little bit more quickly than was actually happening with the systems that are in place. It certainly gives someone a higher quality of life. It certainly creates a better world for everyone that's involved in communicating with each other. Except if you're scared, and lots of people are, okay. that what this really is, is the first step towards creating a population of cyborgs or strange crazed robots or, you know, making strange weird hybrids of half human, half computer or linking people up with yeah. computers in foreign countries, which might mean they think some hideous violent thing and a violent explosion takes place in a foreign country somewhere and nobody can ever link anything because everybody's walking around with chips in their heads. Listen, I don't watch science fiction movies, so you can see I'm drawing on a really limited yeah. um, a <laughs> limited field of, of, of inspiration on this, really pathetically limited, but you would know what would happen if this all went terribly wrong. Yeah, you know, I, uh, I wrote a book called Facing Our Futures, which looks at dystopian planning. But here's a reality, Vanessa. 
we're all cyborgs already. Everyone's got their phone in their pocket or in their hand. Probably there's a number of people even watching the show right now, and that's an extension of our capability. Some people, biohackers, I'm a biohacker, have gone ahead and put microchips in their hands. I've got a microchip that helps me uh, enter, enter a couple of doors in my house uh, using RFID technology. That's a little bit more extreme. What, we're already hand, there. Did you Everyone's say? a cyborg. This is just... Sorry, yeah, I've Did got you... a microchip in my left hand. Let's see. Um, can we? Can you hold it to the camera so we can see? Uh, Where is it? I can't yeah, see. Yeah, you it. can't see it because it's actually inside the web of my hand here. I actually use that as an RFID chip to control uh, a couple of RFID readers on my house at home, so I don't actually have to carry keys. And I'm 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 more of a, a, an extreme version of biohacking. You know, um, and I did that 10 years ago. Uh, I actually did it on stage at a conference I was running. So what we've actually got is a situation where we're already cyborgs. We're on a continuum towards the future where technology is being more closely linked to our physical selves. Now, I don't actually think that we're going to be in a position where everyone's going to be microchipped. Everyone's going to be under control. That's kind of, for me, a kind of uh, preposterous uh, future ahead of us. Do we need to be careful of that kind of idea that maybe people like Elon Musk is pushing forward saying we can be superhuman? Absolutely, because I don't think that signing the terms and conditions and the ownership of maybe what we're thinking 24-7, 365 is a really good idea. I mean, we live in a world of software and products where we are the product. This is a little bit too close to the fire for my liking. Is this big business for the future, though? Is it the kind of thing that a certain sector of industry, of commerce, of, inter I don't know, in international espionage, the aviation industry, is this, is this enormously appealing? Well, if you think about it, from a research perspective, from an intellectual property and patent perspective, from the data that's produced and from the um, medical and pharmaceutical uh, uh, industry perspective, yeah, this could be an absolutely huge industry. I mean, these people don't get into business doing this because they like to, you know, blow tens of millions of dollars or even billions of dollars on research. They do it because there's an endpoint of profitability, right? So I do think that there is a possibility around that being something that that's important as an industry. I kind of hope that this stays within the medical field and it does some really great things. I do think it's probably going to happen a little bit more slowly than maybe some of the, 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 the people with the hype are saying it's going to happen. And I just, uh, you know, this is the new world and it's an exciting place to be. I lost all concentration once you said you'd had that thing implanted in your hand. You absolutely finished me off completely. I couldn't, I couldn't pay attention to another word you said. I was still thinking, what? Thank you so much. Lovely to have you on the programme.